Hello, welcome to another round of the Crazy House World Championship for 2020. This is part of the elimination bracket, so the loser will bow out of the competition. We have a match between Clearcast and Rec Rec, and this is known as the uh, elimination bracket or the loser's bracket around number six. And there is one more match to go. The winner will go on to play Bugzilla for a spot in the candidates tournament. Just making sure everything is on. So, <clears throat> I don't think I need to go back to the beginning because we haven't seen any trades yet. So all the moves that appear on the board ha are exactly what's happened. Clearcast has played his favorite setup, which involves a D4 and G3. And Rec Rec seems to be playing a waiting move A6 or stopping Knight B5, Knight C7. And just waiting to see how Clearcast is going to improve his position. So, we're going to see a low trading game, it seems. A bit of chess for the first 10 moves or so. <clears throat> so, Clearcast is probed with his knight, but he realized it doesn't do much, so he came back to f3 and e5. Clearcast likes to sack a piece uh, like, like on d5, so I'm anticipating something like knight takes pawn takes, knight d7, and then perhaps knight takes d5. I often see Clearcast sack a piece, even if it's only temporary. Uh, so a pawn would be very useful for h6, if he can get to a position where, where he can sack a piece. Otherwise, it's likely... <clears throat> He's likely to trade on c6. Maybe not now. So rook b8 is a, a good prophylactic move. Just asking click as well, do you really want to open the b-file? Then you have to find a way to defend the pawn on b2. But apart from that, there's no obvious weaknesses for either side. So if there's no trade on c6... Perhaps Clearcast could find a way to defend the pawn on. Okay, so this bishop on b4 has blocked out the rook, but queen e8 is quite typical to defend c6. So now Clearcast is really going for the attack. Uh, I think black does not want to allow this trade on f6, so perhaps it will be cautious to bring the bishop back to e7. I wonder if Clearcast is going to trade and go knight at d7, or does he have another idea? Knight at f4 would be safer, but I don't see any reason why not to go for it. Okay, he's got knight at f4. Um, it's either bishop at g6 or bishop back to g6. Quite a number of pieces defending, but uh, there is a bishop at d7 to worry about if white's able to trade the f knight for the bishop here and then bishop at d7. Perhaps he could... I don't think he gets enough pieces if bishop takes e5, bishop takes queen. So yes, that's right, bishop at d7. Looks good for clear cast. So it's only one piece for a queen because this bishop is on pre at the end. There's no tricky in intermediate moves. Okay, you can get a pawn. I think white has the edge. <clears throat> it's a knight and a pawn for a queen. Open f file may be somewhat relevant if he can get rid of this bishop on h5. Or is he just going to ignore it and put the bishop on? Well, I probably should do something about this e3 square. I don't really think bishop at e3 check is too worrying. But okay, bishop at f4 seems to cover everything. Might want to steal a pawn one day on c7. <clears throat> or as I said before, I'll just sack for a pawn and go pawn at h6. Not a lot he can do with the queen by itself. 
He really needs a pawn or a knight for h6. So a move like king h1 could also be useful potentially. But from black's point of view, yeah, I think this is quite a useful move. What's he going to do on bishop? It takes c7, start dropping the bishop on e3. As d4 is also a target if pawn at f2 is the response. The players have got about 50 seconds left each. So 10 games of 3 plus 2, as always. <clears throat> Bishop f3, so white needs to trade some material. He's gone e, e takes. So we see this rather funny pawn structure. Queen e2 looks like it covers everything. And clear cast might at some point be looking for a for more forceful move like bishop at e5. Threatening knight at h6 check. Because it is eventually a mate on on c7 if king f8. Bishop at h6. Uh, probably knight at f5 to defend the knight, but also to block out the queen pointing at h7. <clears throat> so as white, I really want to get rid of this defender <clears throat> by exchanging for the knight and then knight at g4, something like this. Uh, probably rook takes f1. No, he's allowed. I... Wow. Risky. Is he going to dance around the knight? King f2, king e1? Is that the idea? No, he's taken it. Wow. A very bold play from clear cast. I'm not sure how much he has actually worked out and how much he's, his defense by assumption. But this bishop and queen is really not helping black's attack. Hmm. What to do? We're going to see, a s yeah, the rook is not doing anything in attack. So knight at f6, just pawn at h6. Nothing going on against the white king at all. Uh, just made in one, queen takes h7. Wow. <laughs> Claycast would see it if he was commentating, that's for sure. Not so easy when you're playing and you've got five seconds. I still think Klikas is going to win, even though the, there was a mismate. Well, the king d8, no more checks. He has to defend. Wow. Now the onslaught for real begins. Bishop takes f3, no. Knight at c4, surely. It's just winning. Queen takes g1. Queen takes g1. Uh, yeah, but... Mm, oh. What? Queen takes b2. This is unbelievable. So many mates missed. I can't even tell who's... Rook at a2. Surely got enough rooks. I mean, there's the rook on b8. Don't forget the one on the board too. Rook at a2. It's the only check you have. Ah. All right. I'll call that uh, shaking off the rust. The players haven't played in a whole six hours or something. They get rusty after after a few hours. Clearcast is saying in the chat, whispering, how lucky. Are you sure this is CWC, says Fumi Togs. <clears throat> Maybe this was a warm-up game. Okay, it starts now. So 2-0 two, two is a lifetime record, but yeah, if we count that one, it's 1-0. One Rec Rec has gone Queen D3. With some idea to go queen b5, possibly. Mm. So
So clear cast, uh, e6 is always a good move. I wonder if he's how he's going to ignore this. Uh, rook b8, I guess. I guess he can go rook b8. Because the pieces now don't combine to threaten the light squares. He needs a pawn for a6 to do that, but that's not coming. Knight e5 is now a semi-threat. Probably just go a6, kick back the queen. Bishop d6, I guess, is also fine. I would have taken on f3 and then gone a6 and found some useful square like c4 for the knight. Or maybe not if e takes. Some way to harass the queen with tempo. <clears throat> Come on, Rec Rec, do something. Bishop at e5 or knight e5. I like bishop at e5 because it hits towards g7 as well. <clears throat> So before the match, I was predicting 6-1 in favour of Clearcast, but after that first game, I'm not so sure. But on the other hand, Rec Rec also needs to finish off the games. No use just having a winning position. So knight at d6 to cover up this slight weakness on c7. And keeping a piece out of e5. So now multiple threats, including knight takes f2 and bishop at c4. Almost traps the queen. Uh, probably just rook g8. Keep the king in the center. This pin is not going to last much longer, this pin on the knight. <clears throat> so you, you often see clear cast uh, throw in some fireworks against stronger players like chicken but he does the simple things very well usually so you'd, you'd expect him not to get into time trouble just to play natural moves a6 or bishop at c4 and uh, just to play good obvious moves not think too much He's, he's the stronger player, he's expected to win. He doesn't need to make this complicated for himself. Thank you for the follow, Penguin. G-I-M-I -I Wilbus. Or did I say it? No, I'm sure I didn't say it right. I'm sure there's a word there somewhere that I didn't read properly. Queen A4. Do you bother going Bishop at B5? Queen B3. What about a move like rook c8? <clears throat> Queen c8, okay. So the idea is to cover a6 so he can push b5. Getting closer to trapping the queen after knight a5, queen b4. Mm. Could always dump the knight into c4, it looks unassailable on c4. Or just bishop at c4 must be good. Just keep pushing away the queen with the pawns. Yeah, this bishop really doesn't belong on e3 blocking the e-pawn, because this would have been quite useful, this open diagonal here from f1 to a6. So the bishop at c4 immediately, queen a3. And how's he going to do it? He's probably not going to bother trapping the queen, just go... Just go bishop takes e2. Okay, so again, it's the same material imbalance as the previous game. So it's a queen versus a minor piece and a pawn. Clear cast could play directly and go queen at a1, bishop takes a2. Mm, he could, oh, I'll just take on b2. Threatens maiden 1 on c3. Hmm. He doesn't want to let him run it. What about a move like knight at g2? I like knight at g2. I don't see how this king is ever escaping after knight at g2. Knight 
takes d4. What's the plan? Queen 8, c3, checkmate. <coughs> and if bishop takes... I guess he just wants to play queen takes d4. Looks... Unless there's a better move like bishop b4. Uh, oh, bishop g5. Uh, pawn can block here. Alright, so what else? King e1, I guess, is possible, but then... Pawn at g4 is pretty annoying. The king is never reaching <laughs> safety on f1. So king takes to keep the queen on the c-file. Oh, white is pretty much toast here. So queen takes d4. He's going to have to play king e1 eventually, if not now. But then all these pawns are dropping on g2 and h2. Alright, let's look forward to the next game. Game number two, is it? Or are we counting the first one? And the warm-up game is counted. So 2-0 to click us. It will be in a moment. Variants only talking about withdrawing. Oh, he's got to get revenge. Because if someone's leading 6-0 in the candidates, you got to play all the 10 games. But that might be me this time, who knows? So knight at g2, the threat. Uh, probably just knight at h2 would be the fastest way. Because then you take here, you go knight at... Uh, knight to f3 and then knight at g1 to finish. So rook takes f1. Yeah, then knight to f3 and then knight at g1. Mm, okay. He wants to put a rook on d2 and go queen takes c2 to finish. So just Sonic's asking, yeah, what happened with the first game? You have to see for yourself because if I I uh, do a recap on all the missed opportunities, I think we'll be here for a while. You have to see it for yourself. So we have a French with an early DTX e4, knight c6. I saw somebody else play this bishop b5 move today, and then it went bishop d7. C3, so in bug house you'd go queen takes d4 and ask your partner for a knight, but that's not happening here. So just come back. And white would like this knight to be already on e5. And black has a chance to do something. Yeah, I think this move is always useful. And knight at h6 helps you castle without having to worry about too much about a sec. If he really wants to go aggro, he could take on e6 and then bishop takes h6. Trade another piece perhaps as well. I'm not sure how it works out. That'll be the sack sitting approach. Knight takes e6 and bishop takes h6. But he probably just wants to go knight at e5 and we've got two targets. Mm, not sure what the response should be. Perhaps just to ignore the attack and go bishop a6 and then hoping for some counterattack with either bishop at e2 or trading for a knight and then knight at d3 check. This is defending c6, but I'd be a bit worried about the sack on f7 and then knight e5 to follow, queen h5. Yeah, there's just so many ways that white can play. The only chance for black is to hope that white mixes up all the ideas into a big fruit salad and then and doesn't have a clear direction, but it's actually pretty hard to go wrong. Even pawn at b7 would be a really useful move to threaten knight at d7. But yeah, uh, queen h5. I don't know, pretty hard to find a defense. Knight at d6. Th 
throwing in a check doesn't seem to achieve anything. But then there's not a g6 check. <laughs> so, well, what will be the longest survival? Uh, it's a bit sad, but the longest surviving move might even be knight at d3 check, just to bring this knight away. But let's say knight at d6 check, knight at g6 check, king g8, is there a force mate? I'd probably just go pawn at f7, take, knight takes, and then there are countless threats, including the queen, the rook, knight at h6, possibly. Yeah, here we go. Knight at g6 check. Again, I still like pawn at b7, but it's a bit too fancy. No need for that. Uh, pawn at h6 is also good. Uh, perfectly sufficient. But I think this is the plus 20 move. Knight at g6 check. I think King G8 is false. No, I don't know how he's going to defend after. Paul is going to say pawn at H7, but hmm. he wants to lure the king to D7 and then finish off with knight E5, mate. Ah, now he doesn't have the knight for E5. So I thought Queen takes Rook. Ah, variants only. That's a good point. Uh, so that's less accurate because it's a faster mate. You gotta make your opponent suffer more. Oh, this is a good move. Maybe the only move, the only way to survive. So there's no instant mate for clear cast. Yeah, this might even make 30 moves if the king is <laughs> ends up safe on b8. And the material count is not too bad for black. Wow, this uh, this game could suddenly turn around after a move like bishop takes g2, knight to f3, and bishop takes rook the threats. I really didn't think this was possible to mess up. But yeah, knight at f3, serious threats. Bishop even defends c6 backwards in case of knight e5 check. So, and now I don't even know what to suggest for white. There's a good time to play bishop a6. I don't know if clear cast is underestimating his opponent or... Ah, knight at f3, not, not a threat now after knight e5 check. Alright, so let's look for... Something else. A knight at f4, I was going to say. Hitting the queen, defending the bishop, and possibly threatening knight at d3 check. But there's no need to defend. Was there any need to defend this square on d7? Well, the king is pretty safe on b7. He's got to watch out if he loses a knight for a5 in that case. But okay, let's see if we can find some threats if the queen moves away. Oh, hang on. I hope he didn't think that was mate. <laughs> Her bishop takes f3. But he's getting rid of the, the attacker, where the only threat was knight takes c6. And that was only if the bishop was gone. <laughs> So, take the rook, but then what's the follow up? Or knight. I think bishop takes d3, sacking is too risky because of this. Actually, the knight covers b7, it might even be okay. Bishop takes d3, but no, just some calm, quiet moves. Come on, rec rec. No, he doesn't have knight at f4, but mm, this is okay. But does, does he have an actual plan or is he just moving? Look at g1 and knight takes g1. Doesn't look like he has a plan. He's just 
avoiding the the dire end of time trouble when he's only got two seconds. Yeah, this is worthwhile to open up the a6 diagonal again. So knight takes e4. This is a good move, knight d e4. Especially that the king is always going to be safe on a8 if it's checked. Yeah, king b7. Oh, there's no need to sack the queen. King b7 and king... Oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. Has to block, sorry. Would have been safe after pawn at d7. Check. Uh, so king b7, this knight check, but there's no mate, I, I don't see a mate, bishop takes, oh yeah, rook takes may be better, because you want to keep this bishop on diagonal again, yeah, there's no mate here, alright, now it's rex rex chance, mate in one, <laughs> Joe Sonic, <laughs> there we go, that's the plan I speak of, mate in one, when you have a mate in one, and you don't play it, you're either trolling your opponent or, I don't know, I, I can't explain what's going on. Click us is threatening something. <laughs> Queen takes b7, surely, knight at c5. Uh, does this really work? This is a very slow way to do it. The queen covers backwards. But yeah, queen takes b7, definitely look like mate. I think he's got it this time. Oh, oh wow. If you have mate in one, look for better. <laughs> All right, I give up. I give up. Don't know what to say anymore. Let's just hope we get a game of chess. How about that? Maybe they just don't see drop mates, but they only see chess mates. Bishop at f5. I think he wants to sack on h3. I wouldn't even be too worried about this chess kibitz. So I didn't see the maiden one. Well, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it on the stream. You have to find it for yourself. Probably pawn at g4 to defend the bishop. You can also take on f1. I think this is fine. Pawn at... No, but pawn at g4, knight e5. Or is it better to hunt this knight? But then there might be knight takes f7, bishop at e6. So he's just avoiding the capture on... C7. So possibly the idea of this is to lure the knight here, then go pawn at g4, and then if knight e5, queen takes c7, it gets pretty sharp after knight e takes f7 in that case. Yeah, so we might get it on the board, knight e5, queen takes, knight takes f7, no? So I like this move because you can follow it. Knight f3 check and the pawn is creeping closer. Once it gets to f3, there are some real threats. Especially if you can pick up another pawn. But already there's moves like rook at g2 and knight at e2 check coming. And you can't really play king h1. Because you can always trade the knight anyway. Alright, so how to defend this? Rook at h3, so he's mainly defending the square h1, it seems, after an anticipated pawn at g2 in the future. Attacking here on f3. So I was expecting knight takes, knight take, uh, knight at e2 check, knight takes bishop, and then bishop at g2. But no, sacking the queen for a rook and a pawn. Hmm. Yeah, and again, I think the idea is to pick up this bishop on f4. So wherever you go, king h2, pawn takes queen, followed by, ah, just ignoring, mm, 
There's also Knight G4 check. That is a scary check. King takes G2. Knight takes Bishop Pawn takes. Hmm. Ah, it's it's a solid approach. Knight takes H6. There may have been something better, but I'm just struggling to find it at the moment. Even a move like Queen takes A8, and then yeah, some Knight check, Knight E3 check. But this is definitely good enough. Uh, White, I think, has to sack the rook. Uh, what? Hang on a minute. It's a very shaky defense. Uh, knight f5, knight takes rook. Mm, and you got to defend all the same squares over again. Bishop f1 fails the queen at h1, mate. And there's no other way to guard both the squares, so... You'd have to stick something on g2, like bishop at g2. That really isn't going to last very long as a defense. So I think it's just about to be 4-0 to clear cast. Let's just go bishop. Ah, uh, well. He might end up taking twice on h6. Yeah, you probably can't get away with bishop takes and knight takes g3. Well, you can throw in queen at h4, check I suppose first. Yep, he's done it. So either pick up h6 or if you can get away with knight takes g3, then just do it. I guess he's calculating knight takes g3, rook at g7, king h8, no? Keeping the knight here, okay. I think I would have been bold and gone knight takes g3 and gone for the faster mate, but this is about mate in two. Bishop at g4 to finish. Or knight at f2. Okay, 4 0 clear cast. So there may only be two games to go. The match has been going about 33 minutes. Clear cast sticking to the trusty opening. No, he's thrown in something different with bishop g5. A legion opening, is it? Bishop g5. So black's going for the setup with bishop e7 and then freeing the knight for e4. So again, we might get this position where there's knights just staring at each other, and there's a rook b8 move coming, and perhaps queen e8 at some point. And white just always seems to have an easier game and a safer king. Because if you look at the way the black pieces are positioned, none of them is anywhere near the white king. Whereas there are a lot of pieces already hovering at least in black's half of the board, in, in this quadrant of the board. So, you could play it slowly with f3, you could play f4, you could bring in the queen. Probably not so good to bring in the queen right now with so many pieces off the board. Queen d2 just covering the second rank and also the slight weakness on e3. It's always good to throw in rook b8 and try to make your opponent waste a move with rook a b1. So Recrec did something like bishop b4 in a similar position in game one, I think it was. 
then he ended up going back to e7 because there was too much pressure on f6 so what do you do what do you do for black what's a way to improve the position King h8, king h7. What does trading an h4 relieve you at all? Or where do you need to defend? Again, there's a slight weak point on d7. I was kind of expecting this, but I think Klikar should ignore these bishops and try to probe the square d7. Perhaps knight at g3, trade for a bishop, and then... Bishop f6 and bishop at d7, that was his strategy in game one. It worked pretty well. King h1, avoiding any potential checks in the future. It's a very fancy move. He might even go rook b e1. So rook d8 could be useful to cover this slight weakness on d7. Rook G1. Hmm. So I think he wants to go Rook B F1 and then perhaps to push G4 when he's when he's ready. G5 first. Bishop F2. G4. I thought Cleocast might wait for Black to open up the G file himself, but no. Black is not doing too bad in this opening after 20 moves. I'm normally busted playing the black side of this opening. It takes G4. So to get rid of this knight here would be very useful. What about bishop b4 now takes a knight at e4? Knight at c4, also a good move. Because you can now take a few times on e3. Yeah, so Rek Rek really needs to work on his finish. Maybe the finisher can teach him how to checkmate. Seems to play the rest of the game pretty well. Knight takes g2. I think I'd leave that one there and do so. Oh, no. Not sure where the counter attack is coming. Maybe some knight at g4, but first defending the square f3. Uh, one's expecting a bishop at h5 and pawn at f3. Bishops defending each other, quite useful. Still not sure what this bishop on e7 is doing. Could find a way. But the attack is going to be on the light squares. Via f3. It takes a little bit of time to get rid of this knight on e5. In the meantime, the g-file is now open again. So there's no pawn for g5, bishop at g5, yeah, knight at g4, um, off of this pawn here, because you've got a knight at f2. There's knight at f6 to watch out for, uh-oh. Alright, there's serious problems when this pawn vacates the square on g7, it might even be a false mate, just, yeah, bishop at f6. You could take check. Yeah, take check first. Get buys you another pawn. Yeah, I don't know. Just stop thinking. Just play checks. Check anywhere. <laughs> I don't have to think about this one too much. All right, I'll eat my hat. I'll eat my headphones if Cleacast misses a mate here. All right, five zero. Looking like it's going to be a, cl a clean sweep. 
I got this queen d3 move again. Queen g3. Hmm. Never seen that one before. Just ignoring c7. And probably queen d7 would be the best, although I'm also tempted to take on d4 and knight c2. Rook c8. Yeah, black is getting so active. This is really not worth stealing this pawn on c7. Already, I think this is 0 1 knight e4, knight b4. I think this is game over already. So many tempting moves, but yeah, why not start? <laughs> why not start knight e4? And then a pawn mate son. Because you're threatening knight takes c2 and pawn at d2 mate. Maybe he doesn't realize the bishop is defended by the queen. But knight e4 is just crushing. Uh, still a, a mate threat in one. So Rec Rec had a good win over, who was it? Pawn in training, 6-4. And did he also beat Jasonic before that? So what, rook c1 coming? There's no good response to rook c1, just give up all the pieces. Yeah, this is it. So one of the shortest CWC matches in terms of total time is actually mate in two. Alright, now it's mate in one. Six love to clear cast. Congratulations. He moves on to play Bugzilla in round number seven. So that will certainly be a slower match uh, in terms of time, and you'd expect to be a lot closer on the scoreboard. So, yeah, considering the missed mates, it, it really should have been 4 2 at this stage with, with a few games to go. So, just to show you on. The bracket, this is one of the final uh, knockout matches in the CWC, Crazy House World Championship. And just to show you exactly where we're up to. So that was the penultimate round, round six in the elimination bracket. Glicast has defeated Rec Rec, moves on to play Bugzilla in round seven. And that is it apart, uh, as far as the knockout is concerned. And there's no match against GSVC. And then we start on a 12-player round robin, which involves, I think it's a total of 66 matchups. So that's, yeah, what's it called? Arithmetic progression, 1 plus 2, etc., up to 11. And 60, 66 matches have to be arranged. It's a bit optimistic that it's one per week, but... We'll see how we go. I still have to play a match against King Switcher maybe next weekend. And there is also Master 10 versus Anjo Nakamura for the final spot in the candidates. So it could be either one, two, or three Aussies in the candidates. Uh, Bugzilla and Master 10. So I'll be rooting for those guys. It'll be fun to play them in the candidates if they make it. And just what's coming up now, I'll show you the calendar of upcoming Crazy House events. So this is Sydney time. It started at 7 p.m., so it's just after 7.30. And in a couple of hours' time, Clearcast is on the stage again, playing against Opawazen. And that's also a pretty good time, 10 p.m. Sunday, Sydney time. So I might stick around for that, but take a break here. Thanks for watching and may catch you again in a couple of hours.